Hey there, and welcome to another one of my cheesy YouTube videos. Today, hopefully through the magic of film, I am going to run this video backwards but make it look like it's running forward. What I mean by that is that I've taken apart a chainsaw and all I was going to do is replace the string. I thought, well, you know, nobody wants to see that. Well, in the process, I done screwed up the recoil spring for the string. And I thought, well, maybe this would be an interesting video. So I'm going to film this in a reverse sequence. And then through the magic of editing, hopefully I'll be able to produce a video that appears to be running from beginning to end. So stay tuned. And I think it's Tinkerbell might take her little wand and do this number, right? This is a still MS-210C. It's got the easy start. Remove the four bolts and hold the recoil assembly on. You got to remove the chain brake lever out of the way a little bit and then lift up and pull this much out from beneath the orange top cover. Take a pair of snap ring pliers, pull the snap ring out from inside of this little deal. Safety glasses would be a good idea. There's a snap ring. Don't want to lose it. There's a little flat washer underneath there. I'll go ahead and pull that plastic piece up. There's a flat washer. Now this is the easy start mechanism. I'm gonna pull it out gently. There's a, another flat washer. Try to clock this to where there's no spring tension on it, but if you got the cord with spring tension, you're not gonna be able to do that to prevent the spring from underneath there from coming to pieces. So maybe what you could do is cut your cord, take your cord out. Well, we'll just try pulling this out and see what happens. Oh, crap. In most cases, I would assume you would order a a kit that has this coal spring already wrapped up in a little cartridge and you would you would set it down inside of here and it'd work but I'm not gonna wait to order that little cartridge I'm gonna figure out a way how to put this spring back inside of here now I actually had this happen to me yesterday and all I was trying to do was to replace this worn out string. I figured I'd better replace it before it broke and then I would have a problem like this. So I had two different types of string in my shop. And the first string was, I, I went ahead and wound the first string on. It was a, a nylon type of string, but it was too, too thick. So by the time I got the, this spring put back in and then the string put back in, when I pulled on it, it would not recoil because the string was dragging against the housing. So I found this thinner string but I don't want to use this string. I even know I started to use it. <clears throat> I was kind of kicking myself in the butt the whole time saying no, 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 no. Because this string is more of a cotton string. And the problem with that is it's just begging to rot on me. It's saying, go ahead, put me in. You'll be wishing you didn't in about a year. About the third time I cooled this sucker back in there and I got that string in and it was pulling out and working fine and then um, I got a little bit too aggressive with the pull cord and there was nothing keeping 
this pulley inside where it belonged and the pulley slipped and this coil came in undone again. And actually instead of getting mad, I thought to myself, good, good. Now I'm gonna do what I know I should have done in the first place. I'm gonna go buy the steel OEM string. So I am going to restring it using the proper string. This string lasted over probably over 20 years. And you know, why go with something half-assed when you got something that works so good? So I take my piece of welding rod and I knock the flux off of it. And I put a little bit of a bend on the end of the rod. Then I take my starter, my housing, and I find just the right set of holes in the grill to where I can shove my rod through and it will hover relatively close inside of here. So when I put the coil in, it's gonna be under this rod and I'll coil it under the rod. And by all means, it, the rod should keep the coil from coming undone. Then once I get to the tail end of the coil, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a hook on the end of it. This hook is going to run up inside of here and hook at the end. And when I pull this coil on, I'm going to fish it in there and I'm going to take needle nose and I'm going to continue to turn it. But as I feed this in, the outside run of this coil is going to get really tight against the outside of this plastic housing or the inside of this plastic housing. And it's going to become three or four runs of this coal and it's going to be very hard to get it to spin around. So you got to keep pulling here to pull, shrink that coal. So I've got needle nose and I've got vice grip needle nose. All right, let's let's start rolling her up. I'll put my thumb down on here. Grab it. Bring it in. Grab it. Bring it in. Put more strength on there. You'll see that the outside of the coals against the outside of the housing, that's causing friction. And the more wraps I get there, the harder it's going to be. I'm down to just a couple inches. This hook is going to hang up on this fin. So I need to make sure I pull it back far enough so it'll clear and go in. It's in there. And I should be able to pull this out, which I will. It's going to stay in there. So once I put my string on, I will drop this in with these facing inward and let this little inner hook catch on to this plastic piece, get in that groove. Next thing I gotta do is strain. Strain's kind of bushied up a little bit from being cut. Take my propane torch. Heat it up. Make sure it doesn't kind of give it a little point to it. Now it's a plastic point on the end of a cord. Using a ring pick to kind of shove it through there. It's starting to come through. And there's one end that's got a, one side's got a small hole, the other side's got a big hole. Go from the small hole and shove it through the big hole. Where it pulls through. Tie for the granny knot. I make sure there's enough tail sticking out that when as it tightens up it doesn't pull what short little tail that might be there through there. Have it come undone. Once I know it's good and tight and that tail's not gonna try to pull through. Then I'll trim that tail down. Let it drop down in there. 
you have the direction of rotation is self-evidenced by looking at the, the reel. So you load it up best you can. Feed it through the where it pulls. This end goes in like so. Kind of wrap it up a little bit. The spring tension's on there. See that? Now, I'll tell you what would be a good idea. Take your welding rod. Go through one of the ones that allows it to hold the spool in place. There. Maybe that will help keep the spool where it needs to be. And then I can... Handle's got a bend in it. String comes up the handle, then turns and goes out. Tie a knot, then it goes in through the side here. This knot needs to be bigger than the knot I did on the inside here. That knot needs to remain small so it doesn't pull to that little teeny, or so that it doesn't get so bulky that it hangs up. This one needs to be what I call a, what, what is known as a stopper knot. And this is easier for me to tie on my sailboat, but you go two wraps, and you go back through the two wraps. You pull tight. I'm trying not to use up a lot of a lot of rope because I want plenty of rope on my setup. So there you go. All right, now I got these drop into these holes like so. This big washer goes underneath there. Sits like so. And this strength spring goes on here and also goes in these little loop these little pins there are a couple little pins on these now this is something I am concerned that I might get wrong this spring is where I'm having a problem right now it's just kind of flopping around on there and what is supposed to happen is this metal wire is a guide, guide for these pins that are on these cogs. When you pull this cord, the guide, the, the metal guide shouldn't be as loose on that shaft as it is. And that, then that causes the cog to follow it and it'll kick it out. It kicks out the cogs. But right now, the guide is spinning with it, so it's not engaging all the time. I'm going to pull this out, determine why it's loose on the shaft, see what I can do about it. Gave it a little bend and I'm shoving it back in, making sure my cogs are inside of it. Still not, oh, that's backwards, that's why. Now it's backwards. Now it's backwards. There's a forward and a backwards on that. Let's look at that. When I turn it, they hit the wrong side. They should be ramping up into here. They're hitting the bottoms here, but when they should be ramping up into here. So I gotta take it out and flip it. How nice to know. Now it's in there. See how it follows the metal piece? And the fact that the metal piece is not moving freely on the shaft, it's got some resistance, it's allowing it to work. I think that's perfect. I think that's absolutely perfect. I'm tickled to death with that. So I'm going to put it back together. Before I put this in, I'm going to put my washer on. The washer just sits on top of a step right there. So there's no pressure on them pins, on the metal wire. So there's no pressure on that metal wire. And this just drops in. And then what's going to happen, see that just grabs real easy. Great. I'm really happy with that. What happens is as I pull it, this white piece sits in here and there's another spring inside this easy start mechanism. So as I pull it, I preload this spring basically. Then when it gets to a certain tension, then it releases and it spins over the saw. So in reality, I'm thinking this all 
it's going to work better than it's worked in a long time because that recoil start I was never happy with. I believe that snap ring's in there. Can't pull that out. I think I'm good. I wouldn't know why I wouldn't be. Put this back together. Shove this back up underneath there. Wiggle and jiggle it just right. Start your cup, special cup in the bolt for the chain break. Start the other three. Really happy with it. I think I figured it out. I love it when I learn something. Basically, it's working right. You give it a pull, you just kind of preload that other spring inside there. See how easy that is? Thanks for watching my video. I hope you like it. I hope you subscribe to my channel. I hope you share my videos. And remember, if you love life and learning new things, go aimless.com.